Welcome once more to our video tutorial. My name is Chikomana MD. This time we're going to look at computer architecture. In other words, that is how a computer is built. Now we can divide the parts that make up a computer into three broad categories or subsystems. The central processing unit which is called the CPU, the main memory and the input output subsystems. Now the central processing unit, the CPU, performs operation on data. In most architect uh, architectures it has three parts, an arithmetic logic unit, which is called ALU, a control unit, and a set of registers, fast storage locations. Now, registers are fast standalone storage locations that hold data temporarily. Now, multiple registers are needed to facilitate the operation of the CPU. Some of these registers are shown in figure 5.2. We have the data registers, the instruction registers, and the program counter. Now the third part of any CPU is the control unit. The control unit controls the operation of each subsystem. Controlling is achieved through signals sent from the control unit to other subsystems. The main memory. Now the main memory is the second major subsystem in a computer. It consists of a collection of storage locations, each with a unique identifier called an address. Let me repeat this. Main memory is the second major subsystem in a computer. It consists of a collection of storage locations, each with a unique identifier called an address. Now, data is transferred to and from memory in groups of bits called words. Now, a word can be a group of 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits, and growing, I mean, uh, depending on the computer architecture. Now, if the word is 8 bits, it is referred to as a byte. The term byte is so common in computer science that sometimes a 16-bit word is referred to as a 2-byte word, or a 32-bit word, or a 32-bit word is referred to as a 4-byte word. Now, to access a word in memory requires an identifier. Although programmers use a name to identify a word or a collection of words, at the hardware level each word is identified by an address. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. Now, to access a word in memory requires an identifier. Although programmers use a name to identify a word or a collection of words, at the hardware level each word is identified by an address. Now, the total number of unique identify, identifiable locations in memory is called the address space. For example, a memory with 64 kilobytes and a word size of 1 byte has an address space that ranges from 0 to 65,535. Now, we have two main types of memory. In other words, two types of memory exist, that is RAM and ROM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Now under RAM, we have Static RAM and Dynamic RAM. Now I just want us to discuss something under Random Access Memory. Now RAM can be uh, 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 um, divided into two parts, that is volatile and non-volatile kind of memory. Now, a volatile memory is lost when you switch on your computer. In other words, immediately when you switch off your computer, volatile memory is lost, e.g. primary storage. In other words, the main memory is volatile. In other words, the RAM is volatile. Now, what is the meaning of non-volatile? When we talk of non-volatile, volatile is permanent, e.g. secondary storage. Now, let me discuss with you static and dynamic RAM chips. Now, data store in static chips stay there as long as there is power. In other words, as long as there is power, data which is stored in static uh, RAM is there. But immediately when there is no power, that data is removed. Now, data stored in, di in dynamic uh, memory in most RAM, I mean, it's, 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 uh, okay, let me repeat, uh, repeat myself. Data stored in dynamic Okay, something is wrong here. Data 
stored in RAM is dynamic and must be continually refreshed. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. Data stored in RAM is dynamic and it must be continually refreshed. Now, data stored in uh, static RAM stay there as long as there is power. Memory chip performance. Chip performance is attributed to two things, clock speed and chip capacity. Now, clock speed is how fast data can be read to and from the chip and is measured in hertz. Let me repeat this. Clock speed is how fast data can be read and from the chip and is measured in hertz. Chip capacity. Now, what is this chip capacity? How much data can be stored on a chip? and is measured in in, 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 in in megabytes, kilobytes, etc. Right, let us look at read-only memory, which is also called ROM. ROM is divided into three types of memory. We have a programmable read-only memory, which is called PROM. We have erasable programmable read-only memory, which is EEPROM. We have electrical erasable programmable read memory, which is EEPROM. Uh, uh, um, when we talk of PROM, in other words, this can be programmed. In other words, uh, 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 electronics experts can program this. Right, when we talk of EPROM, EPROM can be erased. In other words, whatever is stored, whatever is stored in EPROM can be erased. Now, when we talk of EEPROM, in other words, this one can be erased, but it can only be erased by using uh, electricity. In other words, it can be electrically erasable. Right, let us look at com computer memory hierarchy. Now, computer users need a lot of memory, especially memory that is very fast and inexpensive. Now, this demand is not always possible to satisfy. Now, very fast memory is usually not cheap. In other words, very fast memory is very, very expensive. Therefore, computer experts uh, made a compromise. Uh, they, they, they developed some of the built-in memory. Now, this is the hierarchy of the levels of memory that are built. In other words, we have registers, we have cache memory, and main memory is the one that you can go and buy. In other words, here we are talking about RAM. Let us look at cache memory. Now, cache memory is faster than main memory, but slower than the CPU and its registers. Now, cache memory, which is normally small in size, is placed between the CPU and the main memory. I want you to note the following. Cache memory is faster than main memory, but slower than CPU and its registers. Let us look at input-output subsystem. The third major subsystem in a computer is the collection of devices referred to as the input, output, or I.O. subsystem. Now, this subsystem allows a computer to communicate with the outside world and to store programs and data even when the power is off. Now, input, output devices can be divided into two broad categories, non-storage and storage devices. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. When we talk of input, output devices, these can be divided into two broad categories. We have non-storage and storage devices. Now, non-storage devices allow the CPU or memory to communicate with the outside world, but they cannot store information. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. Non-storage devices allow the CPU or memory to communicate with the outside world, but they cannot store information, e.g. the keyboard and monitor and the printer. In other words, if I can ask you the question, what are the examples of non-storage devices? We have the keyboard and the monitor as well as the printer. Now, storage devices, although classified as input-output devices, can store large amounts of information to be retrieved at a later time.
Now they are cheaper than main memory and their contents are non-volatile. That is not erased. In other words, the contents of, 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 of secondary storage devices, in other words, the other name of these secondary storage devices, uh, I mean storage devices, is what we call secondary storage devices. Now, they are cheaper than main memory and their contents are non-volatile. In other words, even though there is no power or when the power is turned off, they are not erased. Now, they are sometimes referred to as auxiliary storage devices. Now, we can categorize them as either magnetic or optical. subsystem interconnection. Now the previous sections outlined the characteristics of the three subsystems, the CPU, the main memory and the input-output subsystem in a standalone computer. Now in this section we explore how these three subsystems are interconnected. The interconnection plays an important role because information needs to be exchanged between the three subsystems. Connecting the CPU and memory. Now, the CPU and memory are normally connected by three groups of connection, each called a bus. Now, we have three types of bus. We have the data bus, we have the address bus, and the control, and the control bus. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. The CPU and memory are normally connected by three groups of connection, each called a bus. Now, the data bus, the address bus, and the control bus. Now, today, general purpose computers use a set of instructions called a program to process data. A computer executes the program to create output data from input data. Both the program and the data are stored in memory. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. Today, general purpose computers use a set of instructions called a program to process data. Now, a computer executes the program to create output data from input data. Both the program and the data are stored in memory. Now, you must note that the CPU uses repeating machine cycles to execute instructions in the program, one by one. Now, such is what we call machine cycle. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. The central processing unit uses repeating machine cycles to execute instructions in the program one by one from beginning to end. Now, this is what we call machine cycle. Now, a simplified cycle can consist of three phases. We have the fetch stage, the decode stage, and the execute stage. Now, commands are required to transfer data from input-output devices to the CPU and memory. Now, because input-output devices operate at much slower speeds than the CPU, the operation of the CPU must be somehow synchronized with the I.O. devices. Three methods have been devised for this synchronization. We have program I.O., interrupt-driven I.O., and direct memory access. In other words, In order for the CPU to, to, to work with a, a slower a, 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 a input-output devices, there are three metho methods that have been devised for this synchronization. We have programmed I.O., we have interrupt-driven I.O., we have direct memory access, that is DMA. different architectures. Now the architecture and organization of computers has gone through many changes in recent decades. Now in this section we discuss some common some common architectures and, 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 and organization that differ from the simple computer architecture we discussed earlier. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. Now, the architecture and organization of computers has gone through many changes in recent decades. Now, in this section, we discuss some common architectures and organizations that differ from the simple computer architecture, architecture we discussed earlier. Now, we have two types of, 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 of computer instructions.
we have the CISC, which is pronounced RISC. This one stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. Now, the strategy behind CISC architecture is to have a large set of instructions, including complex ones. Programming CISC based computers is easier than in other designs because there is a single instructions for both simple and complex tasks. Programmers therefore do not have to write a set of instructions to do a complex task. Let me repeat this for the sake of effect. CISC is pronounced CISC and it stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. Now, the strategy behind CISC architecture is to have a large set of instructions, including complex ones. Programming CISC-based computers is easier than in other designs because there is a single instruction for both simple and complex tasks. Programmers, therefore, do not have to write a set of instructions to do a complex task. RISC RISC is pronounced the risk and it stands for reduced instruction set computer. Now the strategy behind RISC architecture is to have a small set of instructions that do a minimum number of simple operations. Complex instructions are simulated using a subset of simple instructions. Now programming in RISC is more difficult and time consuming than in the other design because most of the complex instructions are simulated using simple instructions. Now, we have learned that a computer uses three phases. That is fetch, decode, and execute. Now, for each instruction, for each instructions. In early computers, these three phases needed to be done in series for each instruction. In other words, instructions N needs to finish all of the, these phases before the instruction N plus 1 can start its own phases. Now, modern computers use a technique called pipelining. Now, to improve the, th the throughput, that is the total number of instructions performed in each period of time. Now the idea is that if the control unit can do two or three of these phases simultaneously, now the next instruction can start before the previous one is finished. Traditionally, a computer had a single control unit, a single arithmetic logic unit, and a single memory unit. Now, with the evolution in technology and the drop in the cost of computer hardware, today we have a single computer with multiple control units, multiple arithmetic logic units, and multiple memory units. Now, this idea is referred to as parallel processing. Now, like pipelining, parallel processing can improve throughput. Right, that is the end of our lesson. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how a primary storage memory looks like and how a secondary storage memory looks like. Right, this is an example of, of RAM, that is random access, uh, a random access memory. Uh, it's an example of primary storage. Right, this is an example of, uh, these are examples of, of, of um, secondary storage. The flash disk, the floppy disk, the zip disk, the CD rewritable, CD recordable, DVD rewritable, DVD recordable, storage tape, uh, smart media removable hard drive, micro drive, memory stick, smart cards, online storage site, PC cards. Right, that is the end.